Um, this is E here, Andrew, and this is Storm Zinc, and we're going to be discussing the uh, of the Man of Steel movie. Man of Steel. This is my re-review um, podcast form because I don't want to do another video form. I told Andrew I'll be doing this podcast with him, so I don't want to do two other videos. So this is going to be on my channel as well. Um, in fact, I just got back from seeing the movie again about an hour and a half ago. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, and I re and I saw it. Uh, I saw it twice on Father's Day with my dad, and 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 to and to let everyone know that my dad is not really a comic book guy, you know, like I am. You know, he's a very old school person. You know, and he even liked the movie. He didn't love it, you know, but he didn't hate it. Well, and yeah, I, I mean, I seen the movie opening night. At mm -hmm. the Walmart, you know, re-release or pre-release rather, and um, yeah. <laughs> and when I did the review the next day, um, there was a lot of factors going into that review. I'm not taking back everything I said. I will say that I had a better experience with the movie this time around. When I mm -hmm. did the review of Superman, Man of Steel, the first review I did, um, I was at a theater that had. Ten kids in front of me bouncing around talking. I had people behind me talking. The screen was so damn small. Um, uh. just, just not a good theater. It's not my normal theater that I usually go to. It was a different one. Um, because that was only that was the only theater those tickets were available for. Then after that, I went to work for nine hours. Came home, reviewed. I was super tired, and um. <laughs> Still so not in the best mind state to go, but I said before, like right after this review, I said I'm going to see this film again. I'm going to see it under my conditions so I can then analyze it better because um, that first showing just wasn't good. Now, after seeing it the second time, I do like the film much more now than I did that originally when I saw it. Um, I think what happened was I was so focused on my surroundings, I wasn't focused on the screen. And mm -hmm. in the review, I mentioned, well, you know, why did they send him to that? You know, how did he know there was a ship there that was there hundreds of thousands of years ago? Well, I, I know now that ship was sent mm -hmm. there 20,000 years ago, and it was sent by the Kryptonians to, to set outposts on different planets, you know, to try to build – you know, some of the planets will try to build life so they can live on those other planets. I know that now. That's something I missed in mm -hmm. my initial review because of all the idiots jumping around talking. Um, <laughs> now, I do enjoy the movie more now. I, 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 when I reviewed the movie the first time, I never said I hated it. I said I liked it. I just said it wasn't right. as good as a lot of people making it out to be. I, it, to me, in my opinion, it's definitely right now movie of the year. It, it, it trumps Star Trek. It trumps Iron Man 3. I definitely think it's movie of the year. However, a lot of people are making this out to be like the best movie ever made. And, right. And I don't think it's the best movie ever made. I don't think it's the right. best comic book movie ever made. I do think it's the best Superman movie, but not yeah. necessarily the best comic book film movie ever made. Um, and I think that was something I was trying to state in my original review was the movie wasn't great. It was good, and it's okay to be good. You don't have to be great, right? And well, look, and the thing with this film is that like people are very divided on this one, um, where like where like the major critics on the internet, like like Doug Walker, Brad Jones, and and even E. Rod, aka the Blockbuster Buster, didn't really like it that much. You know, I thought to myself, well, 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 what is it that they didn't like about it? You, you, you know, I was very confused. You know, and they keep saying like, "Oh, it was boring. It was slow." You, you know, you know. I was like, "Well, then why did you like Batman Begins?" Well, see, I have a different theory on those. Like, I don't think the more the movie was boring. If anything, I'm one of the critics that think the movie was too fast paced. I, mm -hmm. it, it seemed like, boom, Krypton, boom, war, boom, destruction, boom. He's putting on the damn suit within the yeah. first thirty minutes of the movie. See, that was my major complaint when I reviewed the film was he put the suit on too damn fast. It's like, you know, in in Smallville, and everybody's like, well, they had 10 years to do it. Okay, 10 years, fine. Um, But in Superman Earth-1, written by JMS, 
You know, they he put the suit on in that issue, the very first, you know, the in, in book one. However, it was something he resented doing. He didn't want to do it, mm-hmm. but you know, he had to do it. And I just felt that I mean, Jarrell's like, hey, I got this suit for you. And then just not even thinking twice, he just puts the shit on and starts going. Uh, I think mm-hmm. maybe they should have had Jarrell ha- give him the suit, and then he had the suit, but not wear it until Zod showed up. I felt that mm-hmm. it, he should have put the suit on after Zod showed up. It, it would have built more to him, you know, becoming his destiny. Because at that point, mm-hmm. there was no threat on Earth. So, it, so he didn't have to fulfill um, at least not yet. Destiny. Yeah. There, um, exactly. There was no threat on Earth at that point. In Superman Earth 1, it was after the um, alien rays showed up that Clark, you know, donned the suit. And I just felt that it would have been a little more effective that way. I just felt it was just, it was like, boom, boom, boom. You know, Krypton destroyed. Boom this, boom that. He's got yeah. the suit on. And I think they should have just... He kind of let but, up to the suit a little bit, but but I think I can understand why he did it so quickly was because I'm willing to bet he I'm willing to bet that that, that he doesn't have the runtime, you know, to talk about his past, um, you know, you know, and, and do the whole battle with you know with um with Zod and his cronies, you know, you know, and do all that other stuff, and and do the build up to the suit. You had two hours and 20 minutes to do it. <laughs> the movie was two hours and 20 minutes, and I'm still going to stand by the fact that that movie was way too long. There's plenty of stuff you could have easily cut out and made it an even two-hour movie, and it would have been just effective. Um, even mm-hmm. If you even would have shortened it by 30 minutes, him putting on a suit that quick wouldn't be a big of a deal as it is now. Um, there was a scene in the movie, and this bothered me the first time I seen it too, where Clark shows up at a church, and he basically confesses to this priest that that Zod is after him, and uh, nothing to do with that scene changed the story in any way. You could have just mm-hmm. cut that whole five minute scene out of the movie, and it wouldn't have affected the uh, story. They just pretty at much all. Want, uh, uh, they just pretty much want to. Throw in, you know, like a Jesus allegory, you know, where you, you know, where if you see in the background, you know, you see like Jesus, like uh, on behind his head. You know, I think that was the whole point of that scene. But the 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 scene itself was irrelevant into the story that yeah. was going on at that time. I think you could have cut some of that out. You could have cut a little bit of some of the fight sequence because. Or- that fight sequence took up the whole third act of the movie. I mean, or, there was nothing but fighting. Or at least, like, or at least make it like you know, you know, maybe instead of him talking to a priest, you know, uh, maybe he went, uh, maybe he goes to Jarrell, you know, and asks him, you know, what he should do. That would have been better. That would have made more sense because I didn't feel, I didn't feel like we had that interaction with Clark. And Jarrell, like we get, in, like we we get that interaction with the previous movies. We get that. Inter- mm-hmm. I mean, we just didn't get that interaction. It was like, who are you? I'm your father. Here's your suit. He puts it on. Boom. Okay. Uh, we we kind of got a more reaction between Jarrell and Zod, and mm-hmm. a more reaction between Jarrell and Lois than we kind of did with Clark and Jarrell. And I just thought that was a missed opportunity. Hmm. And, and what did you think of Russell Crowe as Jarrell? I think I, I think I thought he was awesome in that movie. I have no problem with any of the cast. I yeah, think yeah, the like... cast did a wonderful job. I think the script could have been a little leaner. Um, yeah. Uh, what's his name? David Goyer wrote the script. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, David Goyer did the screenplay while while um. While no one did some of the writing. Yeah, I heard no one mostly did the uh, flashback scenes, which I liked all the flashback scenes. Oh, yeah. I mean, the, it did have a very Batman Begins-like tone. Yeah, it basically took the same approach. Uh, I didn't like the whole Jonathan Kent killed by the tornado thing. Did I, not like that. I honestly did not see that coming. I was like, whoa, that was... 
pretty out there. I mean, he it's like it's like Brad Jones said, Cinema Snobs, like, I'm gonna die from this tornado just to teach you a lesson. And I was like, <laughs> you could have done something else. In fact, you'd even have to kill Jonathan Kenoff, really. Um, yeah, because there, uh, I mean, because there are some, you know, you, you know, there are some incarnations where you know, Superman, you know, where Jonathan Kent is still alive. Uh, he you was know? he was alive in the Lois and Clark Dean Cain series, and mm -hmm. in the comic book, he didn't die until after the death of Superman in the comics. Yeah. And even in like Superman the anime series, you know Jonathan Kent is still alive. Yeah, I mean they don't really have to kill him. Um, I mean, I mean they wanted to go that route. Fine, I don't have that big of a problem with it. The the, mm -hmm. the three main problems I have with the film, and I have the same three problems from from my first review is, um, I thought he jumped in the suit too fast. Uh, yeah. I didn't like the church scene. I just thought it was irrelevant. And I don't mm. like the fact that Superman kills people. And I'm not talking about Zod. I don't have a problem with him killing Zod. When I mm -hmm. mentioned it in my review, I didn't want people to think that I actually had a problem with him killing Zod. Don't have a problem with that. Because he kills Zod and Superman too. He fucking throws him against the damn thing and kills him. Don't have a problem with that. Yeah, pretty much just throws him into like a bottomless pit. <laughs> yeah. What I have a problem is Superman killing innocent people well, and he and he well, kills well, uh, thousands of them in this movie wait 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 wait. how did superman kill millions of people okay you're a fan of invincible you read invincible right mm -hmm. when when mark grayson gets into the fight with his father and they tear up the city in the battle all the mm. people are killed you're telling me all that damn fighting in the city ain't nobody died uh I mean, am i uh, I thought the city was pretty much deserted, you know, you, but, you can't but except in like, a, but except in like a few areas. You can't desert an entire city in, in less than an hour. I mean, there Zod is throwing Superman to a fucking building. There was a scene where Superman, like, literally and deliberately flew through a building, and you see people trying to get the hell out of the way. People are getting killed. They're taking down entire buildings. You see city blocks just being destroyed by mm. by Superman and the Kryptonian just throwing each other into these goddamn buildings. And mm. that's killing hundreds of people. I mean, he's mm. sitting there saying, you know, and when, he, when he's fighting in Smallville, he's like, get inside. It's not safe. And then three seconds later, he throws somebody through that fucking building. Hmm. Now, now the Superman I would know, and the Superman from like Christopher Reeves and Superman Two, when they were fighting in the city, Superman's like, "Stop the people!" And then they 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 go off to, you know, Superman flies away to the Fortress of Solitude to get away from the people. Superman that I would know would would some some way try to trick the Kryptonians and go into a deserted area. They're fighting like it's fucking Pearl Harbor, it's fucking <laughs> Metropolis, killing everybody. In the process, I, um, I think Zod killed, uh, um, I think Zod killed a lot more people, you know, with, uh, um, you know, with his uh, terraforming machines. Oh, you know, when the gravity, you know, was like, you, you, it was like crushing everybody. Yeah. You know, and all, the, you know, and all the buildings are like falling on people. Now, now, yeah. And, and um, yeah, I, I think Zod killed a lot more than, than than Superman did. Well, I'm not saying, and I don't want no one to twist my word. I am not saying that Superman. Uh, de deliberately tried to kill people. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, in the act of trying to save them, mm -hmm. he killed some. You're not going to tell me that nobody accidentally died in that fight. It it's impossible. Mm -hmm. I mean, look look what happened to the Daily Planet. The whole fucking thing came down. Yeah. And, and that's another thing. Um, I, think even, uh, um, I think even LexCorp is like totally destroyed. And, and I don't understand. And I think that's going to give of Lex Luthor a reason to hate Superman. <laughs> Possibly. Possibly. So this Superman wrecks my stuff, destroys my building. I hate you now, Superman. I mean, I, I, I like the movie. I really, really liked it. I enjoyed it the second time because mm -hmm. I got to have fun with it and sit down and enjoy some of the stuff. I can see some of the complaints other people have with the, the shaky cam. Because there, there was a yeah, some of scene. it was there, you know, but yeah. 
it, it was there, but but it didn't totally ruin the movie. The movie for me. Uh, there, there was one scene that I really noticed it, and the only reason why I noticed it because I heard other people talking about it. The scene where um they're at the camp farm, and Petey or Pete and his mom is talking to Jonathan and you know mm-hmm. Martha, and Jonathan goes out and Clark's sitting on a truck. He's like, what should oh, I yeah. do? Kill and for some reason, that camera's just shaking all over the fucking place. I'm saying, yeah. going, why do you need to have a shaky cam at th- with this scene? Because it could have <laughs> been a still camera. It seems like, not, you know, Man of Steel is just not the only one, you know, who, who's guilty of this. There's a lot of movies today that are <laughs> all using that shaky cam technique, and it's very distracting. But... Now I don't know if it's because of the terrain they were in, you know that you know and they couldn't make it smooth, you know, you, you know I don't know what the reason is, you know, but I have no doubt that 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 they do that thing, do that stuff on purpose. Oh yeah, they they, they do that shit on purpose because um they have a an invention that you can put over to, to stop stop all the shaking. I mean, there's stuff you can do with like a harness you put over your body. That can prevent mm-hmm. that. So it's definitely a technique that they use. Um, we've seen it a lot in the Hunger Games. We've seen it a lot in this movie. A lot of people. It's almost like with J.J. Abrams, he has has lens flares everywhere. It was sort of the signature for this movie. Um, which, oh, 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 speaking of that, th- there was a lot of that in Man of Steel. Oh, spotlight fetish. The the CGI in this film was fantastic. There was parts yeah, I love- that I really couldn't tell what was CGI and what wasn't. Right, and um, and and did you catch any? Did you catch any, catch any references to to Superman two? Like uh, when he's in Smallville, you know, when he's fighting those two, um, uh, cronies. Um, you do. Uh, um, did you realize that it was Feora, you know, and the muscle guy yeah, from from, yeah. you know, from Superman two? Yeah, I was I like, know. I love it. I love it. Yeah, I knew that was the reference between those two. Um, the one thing that I, I'm kind of concerned about the next film is mm-hmm. the ship that was there from 20,000 years ago, that was supposed to serve as the Fortress of Solitude. Well, that ship gets destroyed toward the end of this film. So what are they gonna, is there going to be a Fortress of Solitude in the next movie? I mean... Well, well, here's the thing. Like, he didn't completely destroy it. You know, I might think he only took down, like, the... Uh, you know, like the controls. You know, so he, you know, so he's, you know, he's probably gonna lift it out himself. You know, you, you know, and move it back to the Arctic. Which, speaking of that ship, um, did you ever read the prequel comic? No, I have not. Okay, um, okay, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a little, uh, a little secret here. Is that, um, the Genesis ship um, that came here two thousand years ago? Twenty thousand years. Yeah. Yeah. That that's actually Kara's ship. How did Kara get there twenty thousand years before anybody? Um, because uh, um, she and her team, you know, were explorers. Um, it's a pretty complicated story, you know. But she had like a stalker. She had like a stalker on the team, you know, who was like trying to, you know, you, you know, who was like trying to get his way with her, and he, you know, when he, you know, when he stops her, uh, like. Uh, um, I don't remember if, if he kills her or no, 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 no. If he, if she killed him, or or I just or just completely knocked him out, but but uh, they were supposed to go somewhere else, you know. But the stalker like decided to to take him to Earth, you know, and that's when they crash landed into into Earth, like during the Ice Age, and, and after and after they landed, um, she wandered off. So she's like probably still in the ice. The Captain America Kara. <laughs> kind of, well, kind of like that because like the uh, because I guess they were like I guess they were crashing in too hard, you know, and she couldn't control it. Wow. I won't pretend like that never happened. Another <laughs> thing about this movie I just don't understand. Not that I dislike, I just don't understand mm-hmm. was how the hell the Jarrell have an exact suit with the cape already fitted for Cal El. Oh, uh, Kryptonian technology. I don't have to explain it. <laughs> oh, that's that's cool. Yeah, we don't gotta explain it. We just throw that out there. We all 
Okay. He was pretty much like, you know, like wearing a Superman suit, you know, himself. You know, they all wear it. Yeah, but this one is red and blue, and it's automatically fitted for him, and it has uh, a cape. Um, um, Jarrell's suit was red and blue, too. Jarrell's suit was like a blackish gray. Um, I don't know if it's because of my color blindness, yo, but I did see a shade of blue and red no, on th it. There was not one spot of fucking red on Jarrell's suit until Zod stabbed his ass. Hmm. Superman is the only Kryptonian suit that was that color. Everybody else had the same uh, metallic leather type color to it. Mm -hmm. Wait, which that? I mean, that that's me nitpicking. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I really don't care about that. You know, mm -hmm. it's just something I'm throwing out there. You know, when I go to a movie, I, I try to look for things. I don't sit there and just go. Ah, pretty. You know, I try to look for things. <laughs> but, like, like, I told a lot of people at work, I was like, if you throw a half-naked chick in that movie and some racial stereotypes, that's a fucking Michael Bay movie. With all <laughs> them damn explosions, all you need is some b Lois Lane flashes some boobs and then a couple racial stereotypes for the Kryptonians, and it's mm. essentially a Michael Bay movie. You know, because, yeah. I mean, no one's going to sit there and tell me that those explosions didn't get a little carried away toward the end. Well, yeah, well, yeah, I'll even admit that, you know, but, you know, but you know what? Out of all the times we didn't get that action in the past Superman movies, you know what? I'm willing to forgive it. They're making up for five movies worth. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? I enjoyed every minute of it. <laughs> because this was the, the, the action we did not get. I, I, Superman movie. I didn't like how they did the Phantom Zone. I missed the piece of fucking glass they were in. <laughs> call, <laughs> call me old fashioned. I missed the fucking piece of glass. <laughs> no. But, but I mean, basically, it's, it almost went like Superman two did. That the shockwave mm -hmm. of the explosion set them free from the Phantom Zone. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, it's basically. I mean. Uh, it makes sense. Yeah. I think the problem is with me is, um, you know, since DC did the Superman reboot with Superman Earth 1, I am so emotionally attached to that that mm -hmm. I'm comparing the two, and I shouldn't do that because one's a comic, one's a movie. You can yeah. do different things. And it's not fair for me to compare the two. Um, You know, people say they, they, they like the fucking movie. And I do not fault nobody for liking it, and, mm -hmm. but on the same on the same side of that coin, Brad Jones, you know Doug Walker. I don't I don't fault nobody for disliking the movie either. Yeah, you know, uh, to me, everybody has the right to their own opinion. If mm -hmm. you, you know, you like it, fine. I'm glad you like it. You know, somebody else dislikes it. My friend Evan kind of dislikes the movie. I can mm -hmm. see where he dislikes it. You know, right. it really comes up to if you're a fan, like like Dragon Ball Evolution. I'm a fan of Dragon Ball, so I didn't mm -hmm. care what kind of trash it was. I liked it. A yeah. lot, a lot of people dislike Amazing Spider-Man. To me, that that's the best movie I've ever seen when it comes to Spider-Man. I mean, it, it yeah. was everything I wanted to see in a Spider-Man movie, and I don't care if anybody. I'm saying thing. I'm saying thing for me, you know, with Man of Steel. You, you, uh, I mean, you know, you know, to me, this was everything I wanted to see in in, in the Superman movie. You know, you know, you know, you know, ca you know actually, actually, good characters. Um, of, of some people, you know, might disagree on this. You know, but good character development. You know, and a lot of action. Well, see, you know, that, you know, you know, that was everything I wanted to see in the Superman movie. Well, I'll, I'll get back to the character development. Cause I have something I want to say about that. But the the good thing about this is. Like, like, with me, I really liked Amazing Spider-Man. A lot of people did mm -hmm. not like it. But it was everything I wanted to see in it. And they can't take that away from me because I have it on Blu-ray. So yeah. 40 years from now, I can pop it back in and I can enjoy it. 40 years from now, you can pop in Man of Steel when it comes out on Blu-ray and you can enjoy it. So um, whether or not anybody else likes it, if you like it, and I feel the same way about Snow White and the Huntsman, that... I like it. That's all that, that I care about, you know? Um, mm -hmm. 
So, you know, just, just kind of, what I'm saying is respect other people because there's a lot yeah. of people that wrote stuff in the comments and they're like, well, I really love it. And then people are bashing other people. And, you know, <laughs> if they don't like it and they give legitimate reasons why they don't like it, then leave them alone. They don't like it. Right. You know? Right. If, because you. Well, that would have- but I would at least like to give, you know, a good reason why, you know, other than just say, I just don't like it. Well, well, why do you not like it? You know, what was it about it that you didn't like it? Now, now, with that said, uh, character development. I thought all the characters' development were fine. Mm-hmm. Clark had the worst character development. It felt like to me that we never got to see Clark. It felt like to me that... He was Superman really from the minute the movie started. Even when he was yeah. Clark, he was Superman. Mm-hmm. And, and he um, was I think just... that's, um, I think that's kind of what Zack Snyder is going is that like, is that like, you know, whether he's Kal El or you know or Clark or Clark Kent, he's still Superman. Yeah, it's just different clothes. It, it felt like <laughs> they did the opposite what they did with the Batman movies because it seemed like it was always about Bruce Wayne in the Batman movies. Yeah, and he got very little Batman. Even when Bruce Wayne was Batman, he was really Bruce Wayne. In yeah. this movie, it seemed like he was Superman, no matter what clothes he was wearing. When he was saving yeah. people in the oil, ri- you know, the oil rig, um, mm-hmm. he was saving the kids at school. It, it was like we we didn't really get into Clark, you know. Right. And I'm hoping that we spend a little more time with Clark in the next movie. Mm-hmm. Because I mean, oh, which is most likely we're, which is most likely we're probably gonna get Supergirl in the movie too. That's what people are saying. If it happens, so be it. Um, but I would like to see more development on Clark's character in the next movie mm-hmm. instead of bringing in another character, and then we kind of gotta develop her story. And mm-hmm. they do bring Supergirl in. I'm hoping it's gonna be somewhere where uh, they did with the the comics where Supergirl actually has like a you know, split personality or whatnot, and she's actually the villain or something along mm-hmm. that line until she kind of, you know, snaps into a good person. But um, mm. that's the only thing I have. I felt like I didn't really get to know Clark. Right. And and what did you think of the whole idea that, like, a, a Lois Lane knows about him being Superman the whole time? That didn't bother me. Cause I felt that... Yeah, I, yeah, that, yeah, that didn't bother me at all. Uh, because if I had to be honest, you know, you know, you know, you know, I really do get sick of the whole like, oh, I, oh, I must keep my secret identity from, from from my love interest because that's how it's always done. Now, now, with that said, I didn't mind Lois knowing, but Clark is telling everybody who the fuck he is. Yeah, I'm like he's going up to the military and going, I live in Kansas, I live in small, like, like he's in Smallville with his suit on at his house. And like, mm-hmm. really? I mean, everybody knows who the fuck he is. The one thing I disliked about the movie, and it's not the movie's fault in general, was mm-hmm. at the very end where the one military girl was like, I think he's hot. I, I, everybody laughed. I was like, you know, I looked at my wife. I'm like, you know, everybody who laughs at that is a fucking moron. <laughs> I'm like, they, they put that little joke in there just for all the idiots. I think he's mm-hmm. hot. Really? <laughs> that, that, that's for the dumb people in the audience. Yeah, but uh, but uh, um, but but what I really liked about this uh, between him and Lois is that is that Superman actually has a reason to fall in love with Lois because because in the past you know they fall in love you know because that's just how it's supposed to be you know he's supposed to fall in love with Lois but in this one he actually has a reason to fall in love with her because because Lois was the only one you know who you know who you know who actually you know who actually um who actually believes in him i i like the fact that Lois falls in love with Clark and not Superman yeah because in the previous movies in the earlier comics it's like Oh, I'm so in love with Superman because he's Superman. You know? <laughs> I mean, if yeah. you go back and watch the previous movies, oh, like, oh, even in Smallville, Lois was always into the red blue blur. And she she always overlooked Clark. And this one, she falls in love with Clark. Um, yeah, like, that's the first name that you know that she actually calls him. Clark. She calls him by Clark. 
Like, like when he's fighting the Kryptonians and like this big explosion happens, she yells Clark. She doesn't yell Superman. Yeah. You know. And thank God yeah, for and that because that's it, what I like about this one is that like is that like is that he's I miss that like uh. Um, is that with this relationship, uh, 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 he's actually willing to trust her to to keep his identity a secret, you know, you know, and not rely on himself to keep to keep the secret. Yeah, I, I like the fact that they make Lois not a shallow bimbo. Oh yeah, like I, I actually like this Lois a lot better than than the old the older versions. You know, you know where she actually does something. Yeah, even though she still got to get her ass saved like three times in this fucking movie. It's like, <laughs> yeah, but what, that, yeah, but that's forgettable. <laughs> yeah, it's like okay, uh, once, twice, and then like three times she got to be saved. But she actually does stuff. She's not stupid. Um. Like, like, even in the beginning of the movie, she's like, well, if we're done comparing dicks, okay, show me what the fuck you got here so we can get on <laughs> our way. And um, it, it was just better. She's not a shallow, bimbo character, and mm-hmm. that's what I like. I think, overall, I think uh, Russell Crowe had probably the best performance in the entire movie. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Jor-El whooped Zod's ass in the beginning of the movie. I was like, that is freaking badass. Make a movie about him. Yeah, make a prequel about Jarrell. <laughs> and, and you know what? I would actually like to see that. You, 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 know, you know, how did uh, Jarrell, Jarrell and Laura meet? You, you, know, you, you know, how did they fall in love? Where did, when did they meet? Well, they um, met, is there even like marriage on Krypton? They, they met when they were in the little Matrix bubbles. <laughs> yeah, like, and... Um, and it's something I thought was strange in the story is the idea that like, the Kryptonians like stopped doing natural births. I thought that was weird, but it, but, but, but I was like, eh, eh, I, 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 I'm out, I don't think it's gonna be that important in in the future movies. You know, because I thought that was kind of weird. I, I didn't like that. I tried to pretend like I never heard that. I was yeah. Like, what? What's that? Okay, let's never bring it up again. That's what I felt about it because it, it was like they were doing the Matrix, man. It was like, yeah, what, I know. What what happened? Our our lead scientist died. Okay, we'll just grab another one off this fucking tree here. <laughs> Boom. And it was like really. Oh, because, and, uh, oh, oh, because I do think like it, like like he was trying to bring a message where like you know you know trying to do like a destiny versus choice kind kind of message. You know, because it seems like on Krypton, you know, you're either a born, you know, you're either born to be a scientist or born to be a warrior or born to be a leader. You know, yeah. you, you know, you're like you ha- you have no choice. But uh, um, but um, but um, but his parents wanted him to give him a choice to what he wants to do. But it seemed to me like for all these people on Krypton, supposed to be so smart, so advanced, they were pretty damn dumb. Yeah, like. Okay, okay, like, in every incarnation of Superman, the, the Kryptonians are so advanced, yet they're so dumb. <laughs> like, they would him. not listen to jor All the times he's saying, hey, Krypton's gonna blow. I have all the evidence to prove it. Oh, that jor he's crazy. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, it just makes no sense, but you know what? The plot demands it. And, and one thing... That I, I kind of frowned upon. I wish they would have done different. Was I wish that Zod didn't kill Jarrell because I think I, I I feel that Jarrell should have been with Lara when the planet blew. Right. I, I didn't like because, the fact that she was by herself when that planet yeah, blew. Be, yeah, because um, uh, because uh, um, I think that like even if he didn't kill Jarrell, you know, um, he'll uh, um, he and his cronies, you know, will still be punished. You know, for trying to, you know, for yeah, trying yeah. to throw a coup on the government. Yeah. I mean, they, they tried, yeah, exactly. They tried to overthrow the government. They were still been sentenced to the Phantom Zone. They didn't mm-hmm. have to kill Jarrell. That You know, they, I just wish they would have kept Jarrell alive for the final scene on Krypton. Because that's the yeah. way it's been since the beginning of time. Yeah. It, it wasn't something they had to change to be different. I think that added more of a shock factor to people than anything. Mm-hmm. You know, but 
Now, speaking of Zod, now Michael Shannon as Zod, uh, this will probably be the last things I want to talk about uh, uh, before we head out. Yeah. Um, I actually like this version of Zod than the one in Superman 2. You because shut your I... mouth. <laughs> no, 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 no. Hear me out. Okay, in Superman 2, Zod didn't really have much of a motive to do what he did. You know, he's like, I'm General Zod. I'm evil, you know, you know because the writers made me that way. But in this one, he has a reason to do what he does, you know, to commit genocide on Earth and rebuild Krypton. You know, and he's so, you know, and he's so committed to that mission. So that's why the reasons he does. Whereas in Superman 2, he's like, er, I'm the bad General Zod because I'm evil. Yeah. But. Plus, he was kind of a wussy in, you know, in Superman 2. Shut like, your mouth about Superman 2 Zod, okay? Bring Zod, his hand. Oh, Zod oh, 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 in oh, Superman oh. 2 was fucking amazing, okay? <laughs> yeah, Zod in this movie actually has a better motive, a better purpose for what he's doing. But the performance by the actor in Superman 2 Zod, he came off as a like a like like almost like poetry when he spoke. When he speak, he's like, kneel before Zod. I will make your heirs kneel before me, Jarrell. And 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 this Zod over here is like, hey, I bitch. will find him. Yeah, I will find him. I will deliver his pizza. It was like, I I, I just didn't. He just came off weird to where the, the previous Zod was intelligent. He spoke more intelligent, like. He was, mm -hmm. I mean, I like them both. Okay? Yeah. I'm just saying, I grew up with the Zod from Superman 2. You know? Mm -hmm. and, and we've seen that Zod reincarnated in Smallville twice. You know? Mm -hmm. So that's the only Zod I ever knew. This Zod, I'm going to be honest with you. If he would have said Neil, I probably would have liked him a lot more. Yeah. Um, yeah, but we all know that, you know, he was never going to say it. Oh, because for one, if they were never going going to recycle the John Williams theme, you know, what makes you think you know that they'll recycle the you know the Neil line? All you have to do is say Neil, dude. I will make you Neil before me. That's all he had to say. I would have been happy. Yeah. I mean, he's shooting lasers out of his eyes, and these people could have just ducked. You know. <laughs> I still don't get that. I watched that part again today. I'm at the movie theater, and he's like, I'm going to kill these people. He's shooting his lasers, right? And Superman trying to stop him. And, uh, and they, you, do know, you do know he can move his eyeballs. Yo, okay. So, even if, so even if they go down, down. <laughs> okay, got he's one. He's going to the right, okay? The people could have just kept running. They're sitting there like a moron. <laughs> Wait, wait, I know you're going to go watch this movie again. I know you are. When you go watch it no, again, uh, yeah. watch that scene closely. They got this whole open area to run, and they're just staying there like a bunch of jackholes. No, I'm going to justify this as much as possible, because <laughs> because even if they go to another direction, he's going to move his eyeballs to that direction and kill one of them. He didn't do a good job at it at that point. <laughs> Anywho, final thoughts... I personally enjoyed the movie. I liked it a lot. We'll be picking up on Blu-ray. Actually thinking about going to see it maybe one more time before it leaves theaters, which gives me three times the same as uh, Dark Knight Rises. Um, definitely liked the movie a lot more than the first time I seen it because I had better conditions than watching it. You know, I didn't have idiots jumping around. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's a different Superman movie than we've seen previous, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. If you are one of those people that dislike the movie... I understand why. If you're one of the people that like the movie, I can understand why. It really comes to personal preference with this film. Mm -hmm. And and so as for me, you, you, you know, you know, I saw it the first time, I loved it. Saw it the second time, still love it. Um, I don't really think I need to see it the third time, you know, you know, because because uh, chances are I, I'm gonna love it again. <laughs> you know, you know, you know. So I definitely have it pre-ordered on Blu-ray, and. And one, and one very last thing before 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 we before we log off. Uh, um, did you find the the Wayne Enterprises yeah. on, on the satellite? I did. 
yeah, 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 it took one of my friends to tell me, oh, oh, oh did you find the Wayne Enterprises on the subway? I was like, no, I didn't see anything. I went to see it again. I was like, oh, there it is. Yeah, I seen it. Autumn showed me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, I can see like in Justice League, he's like, yeah, so, so yeah, you and Zod I'll destroy one of my satellites. Uh, sorry. Yeah, that's going to go over well, huh? <laughs> well, guys, that's all we got for you. I'm Storm Zinc. And I'm E here, Andrew. Until next time, we're signing out.